KSM show. Hello. <laughs> I know you're expecting KSM here. I was happy. And yes. <laughs> In case you're wondering, I'm now the new host of the show. <laughs> and I know Bolare is getting some palpitations right now. Um, Bolet is fine. Just calm down. Sit back, watch the show and enjoy. Before I go on to give you my take on some of the issues trending in Ghana, let's acknowledge our sponsors, eTransact, Data Bank, Irata Motors, Pulse Fitness and Cactus Creek. Right, this week a lot has happened. The frozen referendum. Uh, people are taking the president to the cleaners uh, for what they call a constitutional lynching. How is that possible? They said he's lynched the constitution. <laughs> so let's take a break right now. When we come back, I'll tell you why I'm here today and why possibly the staff and management of EIB are right now getting a heart attack. <laughs> The KSM Show. So guess what? When I was on the show um, a couple of weeks ago, I got a hint that KSM was about to celebrate his birthday. And KSM is always in that seat, interviewing people. So in jest, I said, oh, I'd like to interview KSM one day. And then he said, my birthday is just around the corner. Maybe we should do this. So here I am with a birthday edition of the KSM show. Please welcome the hosts of the show, the man who has for years entertained Ghanaians, tackling issues in a very humorous way and still making a great point. For his 63rd birthday, KSM is gifting us the best of her story. Please welcome the man, Kweku Sintin Misa, the legend of television. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was so weird, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. This was weird. It feels we are sitting on the other side. Yes. I know. Mm -hmm. and, I and for the first time, I'm nervous. Hey. Why? Nana baby interview me, man. Oh, we're going to have fun, <laughs> just like you told me the other day. I said we're Let's have fun. Uh, by the way, you, you developed some sound bites, man. I know. I, I think know. I think what you said about the. Uh, I shall be an overuse when, yeah. when <laughs> yeah, it went viral. I don't think any man will call any woman a shower again. No, no, no. They should be creative. Anyway, the focus is not on me. Uh, congratulations. You try to turn things around I a bit. Did. I but did. I got you. You're 63. 63. Yesterday, yeah. I think Yesterday 63. you turned yep. 63. How does it feel? You know, I, I'm still waiting to get to the point where I feel I feel it many. It hasn't gotten quite there yet, you know. I yeah. guess. I, I guess it's another day. I yeah. feel like I always do. Yeah. Strong, I beat, I have the vim. Where do, you, where do you draw all of this from? I mean, your strength, the bubbliness. Where do you get it from? I try to avoid stress. How do you do that? Uh, by not letting things get to me. Okay. You know, I let things roll off my back. Mm. You know, it may hit me, it may hit me for like a, a day. Mm. You know, the next day I have to move on, man. I don't right. hold on to things. Yeah. And, and, and unless you're positive, then I grab onto you them. You grab onto but them. But it's negative. Uh, you just let it go. Let it go. And you look so good. <laughs> I do? Yeah, you do. You look so good at 60. I mean, you would think that you're still in your early 50s or late 40s. Oh, really? You don't look 63. I no, am 63. not a day old. Wow. No. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's why they call me the youngest old man in the <laughs> <laughs> The youngest old man in Ghana. I love that. I want to take you back to when you were young. Okay. You did you ever see yourself doing this for this long? No, 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 mm. no. I didn't see myself doing this at all. You know, mm. as a matter of fact, at one point, my whole thing was I'm going to go to the university and study political science. For what? <laughs> and teach. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> that way, I was so interested in studying political science. I don't know why. Right. And then at some point, I said, well, maybe I'll be a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know? And then I think one point, I went to the airport and saw the pilots and I saw their uniforms. Ah! You can be a pilot. I, I, I will be a pilot. <laughs> 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 and but this, this, whole, this whole entertainment thing, mm -hmm. I, I just sort of, it was inside me, but I didn't pay attention to it. Right. I remember when we were kids, for example, mm -hmm. I'd go somewhere and hear a story, or they would tell me a story. Mm -hmm. And immediately they told me the story, 
I'll bring my friends around, you know, mm -hmm. and cast them in the story. Right. Like, okay, well, you play Anansi, mm -hmm. you play this, you play that, and then try and direct the story ahead. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that were the early signs of somebody who was going to be a director or somebody who was going to be producing, you know. So I, I wasn't paying attention to it. I was focused right. on being a political science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and here you are. And here I am. I, I know you spent a good number of years in the U.S. Yeah. Um, in the university. Yeah. And there you did so much for yourself. But I want to focus on when you decided to come back to Ghana. Mm. I mean, you were... In the United States of America, yeah, yeah. the land of opportunities, yeah, yeah. Uh, the free world, mm -hmm. you had every opportunity available. Why did you come back to Ghana? You know, sometimes you hear things, and this is going as advice to everybody, right. and you don't investigate it, you know, and you just jump on it. Mm -hmm. And I think at that time I had heard that the film industry in Ghana was like doing wonders. Okay. You know, and people are like, ah, but you study film and da da da, you know, go to Ghana now, actually, the way the film, hey! So I was like, wow, you know, I can go to Ghana and really contribute right. to the film industry. And become a star. And, <laughs> 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 and so um, yeah. I wrote, a sh I wrote my first one was called The Wages of Sin. Right. I was in the U.S. then, and I called my sister Enima mm -hmm. to come to the U.S. for us to make this film because I'm going back to Ghana. And this is how I'm going to launch myself back right. in Ghana with a film. So we actually did shoot The Wages of Sin in New York. Right. You know. And when I was coming to Ghana, I had that film under my, my belt, you know. Yeah. We are getting into the film business in Ghana, yeah. you know. So I brought it to Ghana. It was released. It did quite well, as a matter of fact. That was yeah. back then when TV3 was Gamma. Right. It was released on Gamma. Yeah. It did quite well right. and things, you know. But my point is... I just heard that the film industry was booming and it was ready for this great expansion. Right. I didn't do any due diligence. Mm. So I just dove right into it and then I realized. Uh, did you regret it? No, yeah, Puffy. But did you regret it? Did I regret it? Did you regret not, you know, being inquisitive enough to ask questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I, I try not to think about it, you right. know, because I was making some amazing strides in the US, you mm. know. I was actually cast in the, uh, the, the series in the U.S. called Law and Order. Yes, I, I'll, I'll come to that very okay. soon. Okay. Yeah, I'll come you to know, Law and Order. So I, I, I was making yeah. progress, yeah. you know. So sometimes I think I truncated it, you know, following this big dream of coming into the Ghana film industry. Maybe yeah. I could have yeah. stayed a little bit more longer right. and done a few more things. So, yeah, sometimes I get that feeling that perhaps I truncated it. Sometimes so I say, hey, you know. It's, it hasn't been bad at all. You're huge. It hasn't been bad at all. <laughs> at all I mean, you're all. huge in Ghana. I am? You, yeah, of course you are. Yeah. You don't know? No, no, no. Really? No, I don't. Nah. You don't pay attention to that? No, I don't. Why? It's, I remember initially it was felt like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, hey. It's like, hey, people do yeah. know you, you know. Yeah. So it was an exciting feeling. But now... I don't know whether it's been so long. I, I don't feel it. Yeah, you're used to it. I'm used to it, yeah. You become immune to it. I am. <laughs> totally. Okay, let's go back to law and order. Yeah. I mean, you, you were in that series. Uh, you were doing so well. Uh, you, you, you said that you felt you truncated the process yeah. at the time. Yeah. Now, I want us to talk about law and order and look at the Ghana film industry as it is now. Some say that the industry is no longer there it, it's it's dead there are others who claim that well we can still resuscitate yeah. uh, the film industry what do you think looking at what law and order was mm. and how people still talk about law and order at the time mm. and now in ghana you talk about i told you so and everybody thinks about oh i told you so yeah. died and the ghana film industry you can't even yeah. say anything positive yeah. about it yeah. but in the u.s the film industry has boomed yeah from the time yeah. you were cast in that mm -hmm. what do you think is is the problem since you've had the best of both worlds what exactly is the problem with with the film industry i, I always tell people this that um you may have uh, the abe you have the onions, you have the meat, you have everything, you have all the ingredients to make a benkwai. Right. You know. But the ingredients, they are separately, doesn't make it a benkwai. Yes, I have a bear, I have the onion, I have the pepper, I have the so whatever. They are the ingredients. Mm. But then you mix them into a fine recipe, you get a benkwai. And this is what I tell Ghanaians all the time, and they don't agree with me most mm. of the time, that we have those little ingredients that could make up a right. good film industry. 
You know, but they're still, we have, we have some good directors. We have some amazing cameramen, mm -hmm. fantastic DOPs, you know, and we have all those, you know, but it's not an industry yet. We have yes. the ingredients, yes, that can make it quite a very interesting, com com compelling and competitive mm -hmm. industry, but we are not there yet. Right. But we are celebrating those little, little ingredients as a recipe. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so who's responsible for the recipe? Who's responsible? Yeah. Well, it's us, the practitioners. Okay, so wh wh we, why, yeah. why, why hasn't it happened? Why haven't we got a very vibrant industry? Well, the, the, the first thing that goes against mm. us mm. is the market. Right. You know, we don't have such a huge thriving market for a system like that to, to thrive in. You know, so that's the first Is that the thing. advantage Nigeria has? Oh, yes. Nigeria has a market. Throw in one and it will go and circulate and circulate and make so much money. We don't have that in Ghana. Mm. You can do a movie and do a premiere in Accra. And then it's, you realize in Ghana everything is about the premiere. Yes. But no, you premiere the movie to actually show and exhibit. That's where the money is. You don't waste all the time just so you can premiere, you right. know. So we never really got to that part yet, you yeah. know. So I think that's one of the things. We don't have the market that can support. Some have blamed government. The government the has... the woes of the industry. Here's the thing, you know. Uh, they will put people in charge of film or in the industry who don't understand the business of the industry. Hmm. And what they think is that, um, oh, let's do this, uh, let's, and, and that doesn't make the industry. You, you need to have people who understand the workings of industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what makes a film work? And people say, eh, the government is not through, through giving us money, yeah. which is true to some extent. But you can give somebody one million Ghana cities to do a movie and they'll just waste it. Because it's not just the money. Right. Is the ability to develop the content that is captivating. Okay. You know, the content that will draw the people to come and watch it. So it's beyond money. It goes f more and more into content development, mm. more and more into the kinds of photography, the kinds of skills mm. that are in the, the, the industry to project it. You're very yeah. passionate about the industry. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pause there and then still focus on your early days yes, yes right so yesterday i told a couple of friends that i'm going to interview ksm mm. and one said can you ask him what his ex-girlfriends think about him now <laughs> <laughs> do, you, I, do you run into your ex-girlfriends sometimes do i run into them yeah um well for the most part m most of my education was not here it you know so i didn't have the time to yeah. explore the market here as much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody now? Even when you came back? When I came back, well, I met a few, you know, I ran into a few people, uh -huh. but um, they didn't get to the level that they can now call themselves ex. Oh. You know. Why? What, what, what truncated the process? <laughs> 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 what, what happened? What, the, what were you looking for? What was I looking for? Yeah. Well, when I, at the time I came to Ghana, mm -hmm. I was really focusing on how I can launch uh, my wages of sin uh, film okay and make it big and you right. know so I, I i wasn't paying too much attention to the okay to the to the female department <laughs> <laughs> if i may call it that. Mean, I, I like that female department yeah, of yeah. the human species, species. Uh, yeah, yeah i love that yeah okay and so you came to ghana at some point you got yourself a radio show yes okay yes let's focus on that radio show mm-hmm what inspired you? Um, I came back to Ghana, very fired up, you know, the returnee. Yeah. You're from America, bah! That reminds know. me of the saga of the returnee. Thank, that's right, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so I was very fired up, you know, and coming from New York, after sitting so long in New York, I came and I, I just found Ghana, the pace was too slow. Right. Nothing was energetic. Everything was, for me, like in slow motion. Mm. So I got on radio, and like I said, I used to listen to talk radio a lot. I love talk radio. Mm. And there was a station I was listening to in New York called WBLS, mm -hmm. you know. And so when I came to Ghana and I realized that the film thing was not as they said it would be, <laughs> <laughs> I started looking for something else to do. Right. You know, and I said, wow, radio was then just starting, private radio. Yeah. We had Joy, few radio stations. Yeah. 
So I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can go into radio and do a talk show. Right. And one thing too, back in the days, um, people couldn't even comment freely on the, on the phone, mm -hmm. on, on the radio. On they the were radio. like afraid. Yeah. You hear people, actually, the, sound, the voice sound muffled because, I don't know. They were afraid. Yeah. You, I said, oh, no, yeah. this, this should change. I mean, be free to talk, you know. And back in the day, there was one guy who was listening to a radio called Kwekuse Chiyadu. Ah, I'm sure you know Kwekuse Chiyadu. Of course. Yes. And I loved this program, Front Page. Yeah. So I was listening to the Front Page one day, and I said, I could do something like this. Right. Yeah. So I decided I'll be on radio. So I wrote this quick proposal mm -hmm. on a program called Talk Shop, mm -hmm. and I took it to the then Vibe FM. Yes. And uh, had an interview with the manager, and he asked me, and he told me later there was one thing I said at the interview that that made me get the job. Mm. I told him that there's nothing like a dull topic. They can only be a dull presenter. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And he, he just fell in love with that. And I got a job. And you started that show. <laughs> <laughs> and you started it. So I started a talk shop and it was known as the most controversial thing. Absolutely, because yeah. I'm coming to the controversy. Yeah, yeah. Which of them shocked you the most? <sighs> Taking on pastors. Mmm, yeah. sasa bonsam. Yes, Antichrist. <laughs> Antichrist. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, oh, I took them on like there's no tomorrow. And it had never been done ever in yeah. Ghana. Yeah. To be on radio and talk about pastors yeah. negatively, the way I was. Mm. Well, not pastors, but some pastors. Yeah. You know, I went to church back in the day. I followed my sister to church and um, saw my Assemblies of God thing. And I remember the pastor, when he came to the offering, said, uh, uh, some people are giving, back in the day, with old yeah. currency. Uh, some people are giving 100,000. Uh, some people are giving uh, 20 cities. And you think God will bless you all the same? Oh, my God. So I said, no, this is wrong. When did we start auctioning mm. blessings in church? Mm. So that's what I took on air and just went off like crazy. Yeah. And, um, but you know something? Back in the day, when I took on the pastors, and I opened the phone lines, 99.9% .9 will call me and lambast me. Who do you think you are? Ba 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 You know? Mm -hmm. Today, when I'm listening to talk radio and somebody is taking on pastors, 99% of the call call to support. So there's been some change, I think. You, you should be proud of yourself. Because at the time, yeah. I mean, we're coming from a position of being quiet. Yeah. The pastor is the man of God. Yeah. Touch not my anointed. anointed yeah. And you dare not. And here you are touching the anointed. Like, how dare you yes, do yes, that? Yes. But now I think people have come to realize yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some anointed men can be touched. Yeah. <laughs> if they are indeed anointed. If they are indeed anointed. Yeah. yeah. But again, I mean, you, you raise a very important issue of being quiet for such a long time. And then finally, people are, are, are talking. Do you think that the church has done this nation any good? I think one of the biggest problems we have is generally religion. Mm. The church is possibly one of the most dynamic forces for positive change right. if it went the right way. But it isn't. The church, unfortunately for me, has now become an escape for people. You know, not to do the right thing, but to be comfortable about doing nothing. Mm. Yeah. And I think the church has a, has, a, has a lot to do with where our state of mind is now as a nation, you know. I, there's no agency. What really, what really kills me, <laughs> and we're going to be having an election, and here is soon. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So let's not all go vote on, on what was the voting <laughs> day? December 7th. Yeah, and let the electoral commission in heaven <laughs> declare the winner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? About. I understand. We go, we vote, we campaign, we support, and we go and vote for our candidates, and the winner wins. Oh, you mean it see her. Who told you? <laughs> you need to see her. Yeah. If you want to now go to God to say, God, in the next one, whatever, fine. But we, we elected the person. The choice was ours. And you mean it's him. We are not in a theocracy. Where is God picking our so leaders? We, we are in a democracy. Right. You know. And this thing has seeped through everything. Everything is about No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody has a beautiful, this son, that, uh, this guy that I think was just 11 years old, sadly knocked down by this drunken driver. Mm. 
This was a potential human being, just 11. And I know the mother very well, so I went to the sermon, and the first thing I hear, the Lord gives and the Lord takes us away. No. The Lord gave him some idiotic drunken driver, took his life. It wasn't the Lord. Why can't we get to the point where we start understanding that we don't blame everything on this Lord, yeah. this whole Lord phenomenon? You know, it's interesting yeah. you say that. I remember <laughs> I interviewed the Archbishop of Canterbury, mm. and he said to me that mm. the problem mm. is that when you go to a lot of African countries, mm. people take out their common sense, mm. put it under the doormat, mm -hmm. and then walk into the church. Yeah. Yeah. And I found that so profound. So true. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was profound. Very profound. There's no thinking when it comes to religion. You know, it's just like when you enter the door to and uh, go into church, they open your head and take out your brain and say, okay, you, know, you won't be needing this. <laughs> and then close it back. You know. All right. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back with more with KSM. Uh, he's the guest on the show today. I am the host. It's a birthday edition. He's 63 years old, and I'm sure social media will be awash with birthday messages. We'll come back because I want to talk to KSM about Nana Adodanko Kufuado and John Mahama. We'll be right back. KSM Show.